Military personnel of Reddit, what's the best weirdest funniest punishment you've seen handed down by a superior? Apologize for the length of this story in advance. I went to infantry basic CCO 2 stroke 58 in the summer of 05. I had a really animated black drill SGT, who absolutely hated privates. I was not the strongest or the fastest by any means, so I made my money by not taking anything personally and being funny. When he would smoke me with push ups for something, he would talk about how he hated me, and wished he could find some obscure loophole in UCMJ that would allow him to kill me legally. It'd respond by thanking him, letting him know that I knew deep down that he loved me, and that he wanted me to be the best soldier I could be. It'd tell him that I loved him too, and appreciated his inspired leadership. Of course, this would cause him to crush me more, but it turned into a game that he seemed to enjoy. In any case, fast forward to the FTX we had to pass in order to graduate. Him in a foxhole in the middle of fire and infested GA woods. And one of the brocadic privates on profile runs down to me at a dead sprint. And says drill SGT needs you right away at the DS hooch. I grab my crap and sprint up there as fast as I can. It sounded serious. I get there, all the leadership is standing around, the LT, all the drill SGTS etc. Totally grim faced and solemn. My DS, who always crushed me, always went out of his way to mess with me, puts his arm around me and says what, you are a good soldier, you don't deserve this, I'm sorry for your loss, we have a red cross message for you, I'm sorry private, I'm freaking out. I think somebody in my family was dead. I'm about to lose my crap as I open the Red Cross letter. I open it up, and unfold the message. It reads the following. What? Do 50 push-ups. I freaking hate you. VR. Drill SGT Asbury. Everybody bust up laughing, and smoked me for a while before sending me back down to the woodline. That guy was a freaking artist. He'll never forget my DS. We had a private keep leaving his weapon unsecured in Iraq, so his squad leader took the whole thing apart and gave him a scavenger hunt list of all the senior enlisted Nkos he could talk to about turning that particular component of his rifle back. Each Nko proceeded to smoke the living crap out of him until he could put it all back together. USMC here. In our unit we had one guy that would constantly hum songs. Well one day our CO had enough of his behavior so he tells him to report to his locker. So he goes to his locker and stands in front of it, CO tells him to get inside the locker. When he does he shuts and locks the door with him inside. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a quarter and pushes it through the vent holes and tells the guy to start singing. And tells him that whenever someone puts a quarter in the slot he was to sing another song. This went on for 6 hours. The guy made around 15 bucks in quarters and we were all in pain from laughing at him. Needless to say he acquired the name Jukebox and never hummed again. A married 05 in his 30s was caught having sex with an E3 in her 20s on my ship. CO sent her to another ship and made him call his wife to confess his infidelity. This was in the middle of a deployment. One of the more famous punishments in the Singapore army was this. You see that wall over there? Go up to it and push it. And while you're pushing it, scream help the wall is falling do it until I tell you to stop. I'm not even kidding. It's been banned recently though. For being inhumane or something. Former marine here. So there's this calisthenic exercise, the actual term I'm not sure of, that's called monkey suckers. I cannot stress enough how monkey suckers is merely a colloquialism, this will be important later. Anyway, this exercise looks really stupid, you grab your ankles and squat, so really, you do look like a copulating primate when you do it. During our squadron PT sessions, our CO liked to give our uncos an opportunity to lead some exercises. One day, CPL Sharp was the chosen one. CPL Sharp was actually pretty dull. So he gets up in front of the entire unit and sounds off. Your next exercise will be monkey suckers. I'll count the cad before he can finish. Our CO interrupts him. CPL Sharp what will our next exercise be for those of you keeping score? That was his opportunity to redeem himself. Monkey suckers, so swing and a miss, sharp, swing and a miss, LT cob right, call sign, 
Not so. Then shakes his head in disbelief and announces to the squadron that CPL Sharp has now inherited the not so cool sign. Then, the good CPL had to write a ridiculously long essay, something like 10,000 words, on the mating habits of simian creatures. Army here. Whilst in Iraq guy in unit got in trouble and had to clean every portage on from the motor pool back to the tents. That was a lot of latrines. And you can't even imagine what an Iraqi Porter John looks and smells like. By the way dude was puking and it took him about 11 hours. Dude was not a shitbag after that. If you are or ever have been a trainee at Keesler Air Force Base you know about dorm room inspections. Each dorm room has two occupants, two chests of drawers, two beds, two wall lockers, and one college dorm sized refrigerator. Anything that isn't locked up has to be spotless during a dorm inspection. And yes, this includes the inside of the fridge, and the rubber gasket door seals of same fridge. It was Friday, and for some reason it was a pretty relaxed day. We all knew about and prepared for the upcoming inspection, and we were all looking forward to a fun and free weekend on the sunny gulf coast. My room inspection went fine. The training instructor, T.I., went through the room, and couldn't find enough demerits to cause us to lose our coveted weekend. He had an assistant following him with a clipboard, taking notes on demerits. As soon as the room was inspected, we were free for the weekend. I followed the T.I. and his assistant next door, because my friend and I were going to head out to New Orleans together that evening. The inspection for my friend and his roommate went mostly well. Until the T.I. opened the fridge and looked inside, he froze. Then he backed up a step and straightened up, pointing a finger into the fridge he said, Ammon, what is that? I could see it from the doorway, a large Louisiana sized cockroach, legs up dead on the top shelf of the fridge, or as we in the Air Force like to say, tango uniform. I knew my friends were in for it. This level of offense would warrant a weeds and seeds weekend of walking around the training compound removing weeds and cutting the grass. There was a lot of grass. My friend's roommate looked at the cockroach for a moment, then looked up and said, I was saving that for later, sir. There was the strange noise of several muffled guffaws and a couple of cleared throats. The T.I., to his credit, stayed completely deadpan. Food not in its proper container. Two demerits. The T.I.'s assistant made a notation on his clipboard. Yes sir, his voice was a little strangled, and he was turning red. Without another word, they left to inspect the next room. And that's how my friend and his roommate earned the name, the Roach Brothers. A junior marine failed to properly inventory our gear and got smart with his section chief when confronted. Section chief then takes him to parking lot and makes the young marine lay down on the handicap parking stencil and mimic the shape. More payback by an equal than punishment by a superior but, my dad was a CB, naval construction worker, he was two members of the village people in one package, during Vietnam, another guy on his team was a tinker who was constantly being teased by the other seamen because he would take things apart and end up losing a screw or bolt or something, one night the tinkerer was on watch with two other guys who gave him the most crap. The watch towers they were in were hastily built two level shacks with a watch point up top and an enclosed room below. So the tinkerer is sitting in the dark all alone in the top of the shack looking around at loose nails and the gaps in the floorboards when an idea comes to him. He drops a nail through the gap which makes a pinging noise on the ground when it lands on the floor below where his abusers are snoozing. That wakes them up and they ask him what the heck he's lost this time. To which he responds by asking them to find the pin for his grenade which he just dropped. Then kicked back and restrained laughter while they began frantically searching the floor for the non-existent pin. I was in A school, and rolled out late. Showed up to class late, unshaven and with boots but no socks. My instructor took notice and made me stand in the hallway and tell everyone that walked by that I was trying to grow a mustache and my feet stink for a good hour. It didn't happen to me. But I had a friend that had a mouth on him and the person in charge gave him the task of painting rocks because he felt grey was boring. A fellow lance corporal at the time let out a sneeze. Huge snot rocket pops out and lands on his cheek. I mean just one beast of a thing. My sergeant standing in front of him talking to him while this happened let out a what the frick you nasty bee. Put it back, and right back up it went. Funniest crap I have seen. Note to self don't get caught pooping in front of your sergeant. 
When I was in 8, advanced individual training, we had a DS that was pretty bizarre when it came to punishments. He devised this bizarre ritual where a person would have to walk around with a silly dog trophy if they did something to frick up, could be anything, marched out of step, got to formation late, etc. They had to have that dang trophy 24 stroke 7 until another person fricked up, then they would get the dang trophy. He would actually call a formation so the trophy would be transferred to the newest 8 up person. The person surrendering the trophy would do 10 push ups, then the person who received the trophy would do 10 and take the trophy. He'd encourage us to try to steal the trophy from the 8 up solider. I can't recall what the reward was for swiping the trophy. This went on for a good part of medic school. Another punishment, wasn't unusual, if you did something wrong during formation, you'd have to stay in the front leaning rest. But a solider fell asleep while he was in the front leaning rest. How he managed that, I haven't a clue. But we were sleep deprived. Despite the fact that we were supposed 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 that we were Bravo Co got the rep as being the shittiest company to be assigned to for medic school. Thanks, DS Massey. USMC here. Lots of stories. But this happened to me and I thought it was funny. I was in the Mojave Desert doing mock vehicle searches. It was at least 118 degrees and our platoon sergeant told us that if you had any of the overheating symptoms to report them. So I was feeling a little dizzy so I told him I needed to get off my feet for a bit. No problem he said. And sent me to a walled off tent that the navy docks set up to cool off a bit. Anyway, as soon as I got in there the navy docks asked me why I came in and I said I was a little dizzy and needed to sit down. Well, they stripped me down naked, threw me in a tub of ice, and shoved a thermometer up my butt. Dang you SGT. Coming out of PX one day a soldier forgot to salute about a bar. So the LT went off, screaming about proper military respect to officers and such. This E3 is losing it, about to cry. This is in front of the PX visible to everyone. So the LT made the PFC salute him repeatedly until he was satisfied. Unfortunately a CSM was walking by, who saw this happening. He walked up to the PFC asked him what he did wrong. After a very brief explanation. He asked the LT why after everything he just said about military respects and such, he didn't return any of the PFC's salutes. CSM made them both stand there saluting each other until he finished shopping. <laughs> military kid here. Watched my dad tell a marine to paint rocks because the guy said that the motor pool looked like crap. He spent 6 hours painting every rock white. It rained that night and he had to start over the next day. Yeah, my dad is a douche cake. I've seen people on extra duty, basically where you have to go work after work because you got in trouble for doing something dumb, painting the rocks lining the sidewalk white on even days and black on odd days. The rocks probably had a couple inches of paint coats on them. This guy in boot camp wasn't yelling loud enough for the drill instructors, so they made him stick his head inside one of those orange igloo coolers and scream volume, where you at volume for what seemed like 3 hours. I was laughing so hard on the inside because laughing on the outside is bad news. I remember when I was an AIT, I watched a guy have to play Superman. I was a 92R in the US Army parachute rigger. While in rigger school we were learning to pack personnel parachutes and this guy forgot to clip the chutes risers to the pack tray and told the instructor he was done with this step of class. The instructor came over inspected his work and started talking to him like he was Superman. This guy was confused for a couple seconds until he looked down and realized what he did wrong. So our instructor figured muscle memory was the way to go and made him put the parachute harness on minus the chute and run all over the pack shed with his arms out like he was flying shouting I am Superman. I don't need a parachute for a good solid 20 minutes. Pretty funny and distracting. Boot camp. Guy throws up. DICs vomit. Tells recruit to get rid of said vomit. Recruit starts digging. No, says DI, put it in your pocket, says DI, recruit puts vomit in pockets, training continues. My first sergeant made us wax a sidewalk once, it took us several days to build the wax up, and there was sand and dead grass and crap stuck in it, 
but we finally managed to get it to shine. He immediately told us we were stupid and that a waxed sidewalk was dangerous, then made us go and get wire brushes and remove all the wax by hand and broom, scrubbing it with the wire brushes. Okay this one will be a little long. As a young sergeant I had good soldier, he was great at PT, great at his job, and respectful to most leaders. One leader he was not respectful to was a peer of mine in another platoon who was kind of a jackass. He would talk back to SGT jackass, which is unacceptable because it can result in him being punished and me looking like a weak leader. We had several instances of him doing this, and I was at my wits end with punishment. The soldier could do 100 push ups without a break. So peating him to death wasn't really an option and it didn't solve anything. Well, we were on a battalion run one day, about a thousand soldiers running in formation in the morning, usually done first Friday of the month in 11th BD on Fort Bliss, and soldier and SGT jackass begin arguing back and forth. I am a couple of rows back and see everything that happened. SGT jackass tells me about it and I come up with the most creative corrective action that I could at the time. Soldier was a smoker. I hate doing paperwork because it can ruin a soldier's career. Well, we were on a three day weekend. I told soldier to meet me at 1800, 6 pm, in uniform that night, it's still Friday. From 1800 until midnight, he was to walk around in circles of increasing size and pick up every cigarette butt he could find. The next day he met me at 6 am, and did the same thing with 20 minute breaks for breakfast lunch and dinner until midnight. It's Sunday, 0600, I made him build a large frame with 2x6s and fill it full of sand, then put the cigarette butts in a brigade formation. He had thousands of cigarettes, and it took him all day. I also made him draw ranks on the butts and make guidance with little pieces of colored tape and toothpicks. The longest cigarettes were to be the brigade commander and CSM, and the shorter ones the BN commander and CSM. He finally got it done at about 9pm, on Sunday night and had me come inspect it. I took a look at it and approved, and told him to throw it in the trash. He asked if he could first take a picture of it and I told him no, just throw it away. He was pretty proud of it and he said later the worst part was not having a picture. I never had another problem out of him again. He still laughs about it to this day, despite being pee off at the time. I think it worked out pretty well. Plus he lost a weekend where he would have probably blown all of his money at the strip club so it was financially a good thing for him too. TL. DR. Soldier was mouthing off to another SGT. I made him pick up cigarette butts for 24 hours and build a huge sand table brigade formation with them. Then throw it away before he got to take a picture of it. Serving on the USS Pittsburgh, SSN 720, while it was in shipyard, we had a major project coming up that was going to last multiple days. I was in RL, Reactor Laboratory, Division, Chemistry Radiation Protection. The CO required that all divisions keep a secondary, highly detailed log of everything that occurred during the process so that shift change would go smooth and we'd have no incidents. Our log book started off strong. However it began to acquire jokes, comics and stories from some very talented members of our division. It included some very derogatory things about members of the chain of command. One day, the EXO is surprised inspecting our lab and finds the book. We all assume we are going to be in prison or something. The CO calls us all, including off duty, into a conference room with him the XO and our division officer. He sits us all facing each other and he makes our youngest member read the book out loud. He says that the first person to laugh will go to captain's mast. It was the most excruciating 30 minutes I think I've ever had. At some point I think I tried to make one of my buddies laugh. Kind of like being chased by a bear and taking your buddy's leg out. I'm not proud of myself. To give you an idea of the content, one of them was a picture of the CO stateroom door, and the XO stateroom door next to it. The XO door was drawn to be widened like a big fat guy had to fit through it. He made us pass that picture around the group. Another was a picture of the XO taped to the shaft at a head full. At the end, the XO is furious, and well aware of how fat and useless everyone thought he was. The CO decided that, because we had actually taken the real log as well. And since our division was the only one that had no incidents during the whole evolution, and secretly, I'm sure he thought our book was hilarious. 
he decided that we would tear the book a pock 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 a we were ordered never to speak of the book again and no further action was taken. Kinda related, so the heavy is in front of us teaching us the nomenclature of the M16. He is speaking in a semi-normal voice instead of screaming. That was unnerving us. Man love to scream. So you see this, points to barrel. This is the barrel. T his is where the bullet comes out. See this, points to the chamber. This is the chamber. It's like the P. It's where the dong goes into. See this, points to bolt. This is the bolt. This is the dong that jabs into the P. We're all sitting cross leg watching. Trying not to get our head ripped off as he goes through all the parts and pieces of the M16. Then at the end he says he's going to point at something. And we are to all yell out what it is. Points to barrel. Barrel sir. Points to pistol grip. Pistol grip sir. Points to buttstock. Buttstock sir. Points to chamber. The entire platoon in unison. With no prompting whatsoever. P sir. He stops and then just looks at us with his meanest face ever. But doesn't say a word. Now he had been fairly normal talking in a regular voice which scared us. Now he's just staring at us saying nothing. And we are scared shitless. Eventually he sets the rifle down. Looks up at us. Then turns to the left and walks out of the squad bay. Okay. Now we are terrified. What just happened? Did he go get more DIs to kick our butt or what? We are still sitting there because nobody told us to move. Couple of minutes later he walks back in with his smokey the bear hat off shaking his head. Oh man. What is going to happen? He gets back on the footlocker he used as a stage. Looks at us. And in a perfectly normal, no from the diaphragm voice. Sounding like a human being says to us. The first thing they teach us in DI school is to never laugh in front of the recruits. So I just had to go outside to laugh because you are the funniest M ever. We all start to laugh a little. Shut the frick up. We had our fun it's over now. Oh crap I have another. This one tops all the ones that I have. Okay so we are at boot camp and it's lunch time at the galley. Pretty good day I guess the food at boot camp was decent so chow time was the time of day everyone looked forward to. So we had these delicious but Nutrigrain bars available to us in the chow line. You know the ones with like strawberry or blueberry or whatever the frick. This dude was sitting across from me, and my buddy was to my right. Him and I are bullshitting making sure not to be seen talking by the RDCS. Those suckers can sense a recruit talking through a metal concert that's 20 miles wide. Me, my buddy, and this kid get done eating and the kid asks how we are able to get another Nutrigrain bar. I looked at my buddy cause I was almost certain we weren't allowed to get up and get more crap cause we shoulder got that crap the first time. So we think for a minute, and I see it could go two ways. The kid just gets up and gets a Nutrigrain and he gets his butt chewed for it. Or he does nothing and it's whatever. Out of now here my buddy says yeah you can get another you just have to take your empty train. Go to the RDC's table stand at attention. Hit the tray on the table and say whatever flavor of bar you want and the RDC will tell you to run to get it and eat it back at your seat. I just looked at him trying not to laugh because I knew that this dude was stupid enough to do it. Sure enough he says oh cool thanks man. Get up. Walks over to the RDC's table with empty tray in hand. Everyone is looking at him at this point wondering what the frickin' god's green butthole he's doing. RDCs are staring at this idiot going to the table. Heck the whole galley was curious as to what this freaking kid was doing. He stands in front of the table at attention. Slams the tray on the table and screams strawberry. Sweet Jesus on a Jew cracker it was on. Everyone from my division was told that chow time was over. Trays to be throw away. And then double time it back to the compartment. We watched as this kid got beat for 2 hours straight while the rest of the division sat there and recited the 11 general orders for 2 hours in unison. Holy crap boot camp was a shit show. <laughs> Buddy of mine's brother sent him a letter from basic bragging about how much easier his basic training was compared to when my buddy went through. So, knowing he would have to open it in front of the drill instructors, he sent him a cur package which included one of those novelty, inflatable sex sheep. A week or so later my friend got back a profanity filled letter saying that he was now the joke of his basic class. The drill instructors saw the sheep and apparently made him keep it as a pet. They gave him a water bowl to keep by his bunk. Gave him a collar and leash and made him take it for a walks, etc. 
A guy I know was at basic training for the British Army Rifles, and he falls asleep while supposed to be doing block jobs. The sergeant catches him and hands him a large sack of coal, then orders him to get a pot of white paint and paint the coal. After around 3 hours of painting said coal, the sergeant wanders back over and says, You stupid bastard. Coal's supposed to be black. Paint it black. My favorite was in basic training when they made a private climb up a tree and hug it and yell beam me up Scotty for about 30 minutes. USMC. The SDI made this one recruit, Paris Island, who was always the frick up, sit in front of a mirror for hours. He had to first point at himself and say I'm xxxx and I'm the most stupid marine and the platoon then points at the mirror and say no, you're xxxx and you're the most stupid marine in the platoon. At basic while outside the PX waiting for haircuts another private pointed out a squirrel in the parking lot. One of the drills looks at him and says well don't just stand there dumbass. Chase the sucker hilarity ensued. In basic training, a friend stepped on and killed a bug. The drill sergeant then made him dig a human sized grave and bury the bug so as to teach him that taking a life is serious business and for it not to be taken lightly, to show there are physical mental effects of doing such. Navy here, while stationed in Pensacola for training, I was walking past the mega building, basically a huge schoolhouse with several airplane hangars, on my way to the commissary to get lunch. In the distance ahead of me I can see a group of officer candidates marching in formation and one the drill instructor starts running towards me. I have a minor panic attack as I am relatively new to the navy myself. The DI, which was a gunnery sergeant, told me to salute the oncoming group to which I explain that I am in civilian clothes and cannot salute. The gunny tells me he knows and immediately I catch his drift. As I walk by I salute and several people salute me back. In exception of the parade leader no one in formation should salute. The DI immediately started yelling at those poor souls and later in the day I see those same guys saluting everything. They had to salute and greet trees and squirrels. Good morning mister. Tree. Good morning mister. Squirrel. Haha. <laughs> Also, at boot camp the drill instructor got mad because so many recruits were farting during his period of instruction. A couple minutes later, I forgot and just let one go. Drill instructor loses his mind and tells me to take it back. Suck that crap back in you nasty frick I then had to start sucking air back in where I farted. DI tells me, you missed some over here mother. Get over here and get that crap before it gets close to me. Though embarrassing to me, I know my fellow recruits found it hilarious. It was. Chair force here. I feel like BMT instructors get away with a lot of crap. So I'll share my favorite one from BMT. Every chair force personnel knows that BMT is a whole lot of folding clothes and making beds, nothing more than that other than your occasional classes. So one day, while we were being really slow at making our beds, the MTI got really pee and started flipping lockers and bunks all over the dorm. This mother then proceeded to pick 7 random numbers. Our numbers designated which trainee got punished, and pulled us aside and said I expect each of your bunks to be made up in inspection order in 10 minutes. In the shower, as he walked to the latrine he then said oh, and bring your wet weather gear. Do you have any idea how freaking hard it is to make a wrinkle free bed with wet sheets? During our rookie phase on a rifle range a soldier turned with a loaded rifle towards us. The corporal lost his crap made the guy run to the top of a nearby hill and hold a red live firing flag until we finished. Out doing company live fires a brand new private went into the MRE box and rafricked, dug through all the selections to find his favorite, before the rest of his platoon. He got himself a nice spaghetti and meat sauce. His SGT team leader sees this and makes the private dump out the MRE and do a specified exercise for each and every separate item in the ration, including all the little salt packets and condiments, and can only stop that exercise once his team leader finishes reading off the ingredients and nutrition facts. So much sweat. This whole freaking thread has simultaneously made me regret never joining the military and also immensely thankful that I never joined the military. In boot camp a recruit whispered to another recruit wouldn't it be nice to get in the showers with petty officer, insert our female petty officer's name here, only he didn't whisper quiet enough and she heard him. 
the whole division has to go into the showers and do push-ups in freezing cold water with her standing and they're asking if we liked showering with her. My dad was in the coast guard. One day he didn't have time to shave and was forced to skip all day singing this is how I shave my face. Army basic training. We had a guy who was so forgetful. He once showed up to morning formation with no boots on. Eventually his platoon's drill sergeant got fed up and gave him a rock to hold. He told him that he had to keep a hold of the rock until graduation and to produce the rock to any DS. Who asked him for it? He lost it within 90 minutes. The worst part, however, is that after he realized he had lost it, he got a similar rock and lied about having lost it. So the drill sergeant threw the rock away and got him a red brick to keep with him instead. They taped a piece of paper around the brick with the words PFC brick written on it. This person, being an unfixable frick up, eventually moved on to bigger and better punishments, such as being told to hold a folding hair over his head while having hoses sprayed on him, while singing the Sesame Street theme song. But the best part is the story of the brick. After PFC Brick's owner had finally gotten kicked out of the military, his platoon adopted the brick in his place. They put the brick in his place in formation, stood up with a little twig leaning against it for a rifle, took it to chow with them, and gave the brick its own bunk. At one point, the brick was standing in formation during our evening pep talk, and the drill sergeant in charge that evening had gotten fed up. He asked them if they thought the army was a joke, then walked up to them and kicked the brick over. The platoon, all at once, screamed man down, man down. I was at a coast guard base for an NJROTC joint service leadership training, JSLT, when some of us decided to ask a teacher about stories from his boot camp this is my favorite, in the mess hall, you aren't allowed to look out the windows, so one of the recruits looks out a window, and the CC sees him. To punish him he had to stand at the window with his cups over his eyes, like binoculars, for the rest of chow with the CC randomly yelling shipmate, what do you see? I remember when in boot camp, some guy shot his rifle when there was a no fire order during an exercise. His punishment was to go search for the bullet until he found it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.